welcome back to CN Caribbean News. It's now time to go in depth. Last Friday, the nation was informed that within the last four months, 42 newborn babies were infected with the Klebsiella and Serratia viruses at the University Hospital of the West Indies and the Cornell Regional Hospital. 18 of those babies died. The Minister of Health, Dr. Fenton Ferguson, says he was only aware of the infections and the deaths when the media made the report. And at a press conference on Tuesday, a technical team from the ministry, including two microbiologists, said the infections were normal. In fact, at least one insinuated that Jamaica fares well with its rate of infections in newborns compared to other developing countries, which carry highs of up to 55 percent. Notwithstanding, the Minister of Health announced that the maternity and neonatal care units at five of the island's major hospitals and four primary care centers will be overhauled with new equipment and trained staff. But are these explanations and solutions enough? And should the hospitals and the government be held liable? We explore those thoughts right now with attorney at law, Caroline Hay. Later, we will be joined by Betty Ann Blaine. Welcome to In Depth, Ms. Hay. Thank you very much. Now, microbiologists Dr. Alison Nicholson and Dr. Karen Webster shared with the nation this week that healthcare associated illnesses are not uncommon, especially in developing countries and infections in babies are not unusual. Now, can the, hosp the University Hospital of the West Indies and the Cornell Regional Hospital be held liable for the death of the babies, especially given the explanation by the Ministry of Health? Well, the explanation by the Ministry of Health that infection is normal means that the hospital has a duty of care to manage the infection and that this is well known. In fact, we all know that hospitals are very, very ri risky locations for the, the actual catching of infection, you can go to hospital with one problem and end up with another. So it's the fact that the ministry is repeating something that apparently is well known puts a clear duty on the hospital to manage it. If the, the, the question is whether the hospital can be liable for the death, on one, the, the view seems to be yes, they can, because they do have a duty to manage the infection um, spread within the neonatal intensive care units or wherever the infections are. And as long as they meet that duty, if that duty of care that they have to the babies is met, and if that duty is sufficient to treat with those particular infections, then the liability issue may be questionable. But if they operate below the standard that's required of them, as a result of that you have runaway infections, they don't meet the other duty of advising the families in relation to the risk, then you could have a question of liability on the part of both hospitals for these deaths. Okay. Is there any way that the hospital would be absolved of responsibility should the families decide to take legal action? These, it's very difficult to answer these questions generally. The hospital would have to show that they maintain the standards that are required of hospitals in their position for those kinds of care. We're talking about the neonatal intensive care units. These are babies that are premature or babies that are susceptible to some particular illness and have a very, very low ability to defend themselves. They are exposed. So it means that those units have to be very specially equipped very specially maintained to meet those particular needs. So the, the issue will be whether the hospital maintain the standard of care that's required of them. If they maintain that standard and these bacteria, I think the news has identified them as two bacterial infections, are unusual and despite all of the average or extra steps taken, they could not be controlled then the question is, is whether you can hold a hospital to a standard higher than the, the law requires. But if they acted below that standard, they did not manage the infections properly, they didn't sanitize properly, they, they, they shared um, sheeting and bedding and shared needles, anything that, that represented less than the standard of care, then you would have a liability issue. So the question is, how did the university discharge its obligations and was it in keeping with the standards that would have been set for them to manage infection? Okay, thank you. We've been joined by children's advocate, Betty Ann Blaine. Welcome to Indef, Mrs. Blaine. Hi, good evening. Good now, evening. are you comfortable with the explanation of sorts for the outbreak which has led to 42 babies being infected and 18 dying? 
So what is the latest explanation? Because the story seems to be changing as we go along. The latest uh, explanation is that the viruses are not unusual. Well, I don't know what they mean by that. I keep hearing that this happens in first world countries. So what? If they're careless in first world countries, we don't have to follow them. And so I'm still curious as to exactly, exactly what caused this. I would exactly. be concerned what was if the ministry's explanation was It was on sanitary conditions, not... was it hygienic, was it that the place wasn't clean, yes. people weren't wearing gowns. We don't even know at this point exactly what started it or what caused it. Here is what I'm very, very curious about. The fact that children died. This happened in two different hospitals, right. in two different parts of Jamaica. It didn't happen at Victoria Jubilee where most of the births take place. And so I'm very, 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 very curious as to how come it happened in two different hospitals in two different parts of Jamaica. How did that happen? So what would you like to be done by the hospitals and the government to provide some semblance of closure and peace for the affected families? Well, I don't know about closure because I'm telling you, 18 babies died, and I'm a, mo I'm a mother. I gave birth. And I can't imagine how you bring closure just like that to the fact that 18 babies died. And the question I'm asking is, were those deaths preventable? Because after all, okay, so this thing went bad. It happened. Two, three, four, five, six babies died. But 18, are you yes. telling me that after the first several babies died, that something was not done to make sure that more babies, you know, would not have died. That's, those are the things that I'm puzzled about. Really, after five babies died, or six, or seven, or eight, are you telling me that nothing could have been done to prevent more babies from dying after that? And, 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 and the concern that the public would be entitled to raise is the fact that the ministry, the minister himself was admitting that he didn't know about it, which meant that both hospitals, if that is so, both hospitals concealed the fact that this was taking place in their hospital care with the babies, and it only made it out there after nearly 20 babies had died. So, so that is concerning as well, because it would mean then that some of the babies that, and the families that were under the management of the hospital themselves weren't being told of the risks that their children were facing by being in that space. And that is a, a question that the hospital may well have to answer, whether it breached a duty of care towards the families by not alerting them to the fact that there was this rampant infection and that it had the possibility of, of, of killing your children so that they could make decisions as to whether they are going to allow their children to remain or to probably seek help elsewhere. So there are, it is not an easy answer, but it certainly is a very painful and unfortunate experience in our history that in 2015 you could have this kind of this kind of event occurring in what appears to be about four months with with the head of the health authorities not being aware that this is happening now a question i would like to ask both of you beginning with miss hay should blame for this outbreak be placed squarely at the feet of the hospitals, or should the government share some of the responsibility? Well, the buck stops with the minister, you know. And the truth is that what this tells me is that they're not, they're, the systems, whatever reporting systems they have, whatever systems to monitor and systems for oversight, they're not working. They're not working, obviously. And the buck stops with the minister. I mean, for the minister to say he just only heard a few days ago, it's alarming. And um, that's another concern we have is this seeming cover-up of what took place. I mean, here is what breaks my heart, that so many babies died. Many of the, these lives were preventable. I would say most of them were preventable because something should have done immediately when this thing broke out like this. And so we have, I suspect, cover-up, um, gross negligence. And again, I was a woman, as a mother, I can't even imagine what these families are experiencing. It's not easy, as you know, for a woman to carry a baby, give birth, and then the baby passes, whether it's full term or prematurely. And babies are not supposed to die like that, premature babies. I mean, in this day and age, premature babies live 
once they're given proper care. Thank you, Ms. Blaine. Ms. Hay, very quickly, um, should you think the government, should the government take responsibility? There's, it's a very difficult question. It, 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 in relation to, 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 to liability in law, the families are going to be looking at the hospital. But I think that it would be very unfair to consider the hospital only in this because the hospitals are dependent on the government for resources. And we already know that there, there were just recently there was a, a, a brouhaha between the government and the hospitals, the medical doctors, about how the hospitals are not being properly resourced and properly funded. And so I, in, in, you know, it almost was inevitable that you must have runaway infection. Okay. If the hospitals are not given what they need to be able to manage infection and maintain the proper standards, it will be difficult to simply cast all the blame at their feet. We Thank you very much. That as well. But as a question of liability, the families are going to go into the hospital and in some cases the hospital again and okay. the government. Thank you very much for joining me, ladies. Sure. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you. We were just joined in discussion by child advocate Betty Ann Blaine and attorney at law Caroline Hay.